Hey, I'm Theo, and I'm very happy to present our solution for the HubMap Judge Prize. Our team is made of three people, Sébastien, Maxime, and I, who have a lot of experience in deep learning, and actually two of us do medical imaging for a living. Our solution achieved fourth place, and we've made the code fully available on GitHub. Our approach is data-driven. We need to understand what's going on for the model to perform well, and we think there are two main aspects behind that. First one is that the model has to be robust to data quality issues because uh, there is a lot of variation in the data. And the second one is that you cannot really predict uh, healthy glomeruli without considering the unhealthy ones. We developed a robust pipeline for glomeruli segmentation. It leverages the unit architecture, which is widely used for medical applications. And it has two classes actually, one for healthy and one for unhealthy glomeruli. One of the tricks we use is intelligent tiling for faster convergence, but we believe the main idea behind our pipeline is to force our models to generalize well to new data. And to do so, we used advanced data augmentation as well as a lot of external data. Uh, we manually labeled uh, data from two external sources and use weekly supervised learning from, for seven images from the MBAP platform. Regarding the results, uh, we had a robust validation team, which enabled us to achieve fourth place on the private leaderboard. It appears that the initial labels have a lot of issues, and this can be a big deal for medical data because it hurts robustness. In order to pair with this, we decided to re-annotate the labels. However, we do not have the expertise really to, to do so. So we use feedback from our models in order to detect uh, glomeruli that the model was very confident that they were actually missing labels. With the new labels, we are able to retrain the models and achieve better performances and also evaluate our models more robustly. We also realized that the problem is more about glomeruli detection than glomeruli segmentation. And to assess model performance, we evaluate glomeruli level metrics. In fact, our model achieves a great detection rate despite most of the mistakes coming from label noise. We also developed on the side a tool to visualize our model predictions. The idea is to use a confidence score uh, at a glomeruli level to indicate whether or not uh, the glomeruli is good. It appears that scores close to one uh, mean that uh, glomeruli can be considered as a reference one, and low score means that the example is hard and that perhaps uh, the model needs uh, some review on this case. It also helped us to see the limitations of our models, and namely, uh, models are not really good at the edges, there are a lot of artifacts, and also when glomeruli have a lot of empty spaces, uh, models are a bit worse. And despite us using two classes for healthy and unhealthy glomeruli, we still have some issues on them. We also use our augmentation to generate insights uh, about differences between individuals. In fact, it's quite hard to tell because we only have 15 samples, but it seems that glomeruli size decreases with the age and that glomeruli density decreases with the increase of the BMI. In fact, our pipeline is straightforward to adapt to other histologies, so we go even further by applying it to different modality, which is the LCOCT. It is a new non-invasive medical imaging technology that allows the dermatologist to explore the skin in vivo. It allows to retrieve almost the same information as the histology, with the advantages of being non-invasive and allowing for 3D acquisitions. In fact, histology leaves scars and is therefore not really suitable for SC skins. The use case we chose to apply our pipeline on is keratinocyte nuclei segmentation. Since our data is 3D, we first uh, generate segmentations in 2D and average the results from several, several angles to have a 3D segmentation. This is entirely new since histology is always 2D and we believe uh, this modality could help open an entire world for skin understanding. That's all, thanks. Feel free to ask any question below.